Here's just a quick round trip around Production Premium CS5 to just give you a taste of some of the new features. Starting inside of Premiere Pro, we have a brand new playback engine called the Adobe Mercury Engine. And Mercury is 64-bit multi-core enabled so that it uh, optimizes all the different threads running across multiple cores. And it's also GPU accelerated. And this new performance just gives amazing capabilities where I can play back a timeline with nine different layers each layer having different color correction, uh, basic 3D functions, edge feathering, uh, blur effects all being applied simultaneously without having to render preview files. This is all running live, real time on the system. Another quick example is the new 64-bit functionality in After Effects. So if I quickly switch over to After Effects, one new th example is the fact that the RAM preview functions in After Effects now take advantage of as much RAM as you have in the system. This is a full 1920 by 1080 composition, and even though I've got many other applications running in the background, I can easily RAM preview over 15 seconds worth of this composition all in one pass. So this will take advantage of, in this case I have 8 gigs of RAM on the system, this will take advantage of as much RAM as you have in the system. Another quick example of the new performance inside of After Effects CS5 is the new Rotor Brush. Now the way the Rotor Brush works, I can very quickly go in, and I've already started this process by uh, selecting the shape, but using some very simple selection tools, I can choose an edge, and the Rotor Brush will automatically go through frame by frame and cut the edge for me. It uses a whole series of predictive algorithms based on both shapes and colors to pick up an edge. And so I can very, very quickly, using very simple tools, go in and cut an edge, look at this in a couple of different viewing modes, and then see what it looks like in my final composite, even turn on something called Refine Matte to help uh, kind of smooth and refine these edges even further. Now, back to Premiere Pro briefly. One of the other things that we've done inside of Premiere Pro is we've expanded upon our industry-leading tapeless workflows. Um, Premiere Pro works natively with many different formats from many different types of cameras, and we've continued to expand on that with new support for you know, AVC Intra. We have new support for digital SLR cameras, such as the uh, uh, Canon EOS, the 5D and the 7D series. We also have support for formats like XDCAM HD 422. This is the 50 megabit per second format from Sony. So we are continuing to expand on tapeless formats. Also, we now have the RED format is natively supported by Premiere Pro. And we've added DPX sequence support so that you can take DPX sequences directly inside of Premiere Pro. Now the last thing that I want to talk about is, is more of an overall workflow. We've really designed Production Premium to take advantage of metadata. We first introduced these metadata tools inside of CS4. They're expanded on in CS5 and they include some new tools and new services that help make this metadata process much easier. Now when we're starting a new project we can actually start using a new service called Adobe Story. Adobe Story is designed to work with a screenplay, so you can import a script that you have of what you plan on shooting, and Adobe Story, you can also create one from scratch. But the great thing is, is, whether you create it in Adobe Story or you import from a different application, Adobe Story takes the screenplay and it breaks up the screenplay into all of the component parts. It recognizes things like character names, dialogue, actions, scene headings. These are all automatically recognized and listed up here at the top. We can then take the script from Story and export it out to a special file format, an ASTX file, that can be read by other Adobe applications. So for example, if I switch over to Adobe On Location, when I import my screenplay or my script into On Location, On Location automatically breaks it up into each of these shot placeholders. And each of these shot placeholders includes the metadata information such as the action in the shot, the time of day, the scene heading or scene setting, and the shot location. It's very easy inside of On Location to either record video directly into these placeholders 
or we can time sync these two shots on a tapeless camera and using the new media browser in on location I can very quickly take a load of uh, clips these are coming from a uh, Panasonic P2 card I can just select all of these clips and very quickly go in and auto match to the time sync information in the shot placeholders. So now in one quick step I've taken all of this metadata information from my script and merged it right into the actual shot assets. So now if I switch back over to Premiere Pro and jump into the media browser inside of Premiere Pro I can very quickly see that the shot names have now imported over from uh, Adobe on location originally from story into on location and now I can use the shot names uh, directly inside of Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro can also take advantage of the shooting script if I take one of these shots I can actually come in and I can use this shot if I bring it into my bin I can come in and analyze the content and now when I'm doing speech recognition I can choose to embed the Adobe use the embedded Adobe story script and it will actually align the timing of each individual word uh, with the, the actual script the script is actually all the dialogue is actually embedded in this file right now so all I have to do is tell Premiere Pro to go through and just align and get the timing information for that to show you what that looks like quickly I'm gonna go ahead and just switch to a, a clip that I've already gone through and done this but you can see in here I can bring up the speech analysis and now this actually is aligned to the actual uh, script that was contained that was imported in using Adobe Story into Adobe On Location. So the whole idea is we're using the metadata information from the screenplay becomes part of the actual workflow throughout editing and then throughout the final output. So to show you just an example of the final output, let's jump over to a web browser and I've used a function inside of Adobe Encore to create something called a web DVD. So here we have our DVD menu and inside of the menu I can choose to search on a particular word of dialogue and when I do this the web DVD now has the ability to go in and find that word show me all the locations where that exists and if I click on this you'll see that even my subtitles that pop up on the screen include that word so I can very quickly find what I'm looking for inside of a finished piece so this is just a quick taste of what's inside of Production Premium CS5. Check out the other videos on this site to uh, see some other examples and go more in-depth on some of these features.